Similar to other frameworks, Svelte components have a life cycle to them. Let's check out which ones are available. So if we import from Svelte, the first one is going to be on mount. What's special about on mount is that it only will occur after the DOM is fully loaded. The next lifecycle method is before update. Before update is going to occur every time the DOM is updated. The counterpart to this is after update. It's for running code once the DOM is in sync with all of your data. There's two more, but I really only ever consider one more being on destroy. Technically, there's one called tick. Tick is kind of unique because it mainly batches operations. So typically, if you want to avoid something jumping around on the screen, that's when you can batch up for tick. I'm going to cover the main four that we'll focus on right now. On mount is most often used for things that are required after the browser is loaded. So it's not running in the server side side of things. And we'll just put in here um, mounted. Let's go ahead and copy that and we'll add a few of these other ones. Let me open up the Chrome debug tools and you can see here, if I refresh, you'll see before update, mounted, after update, and then once it's loaded again, you'll see before update and after update. Now every time I click a button, you'll see before and after update as well. Now, in order to destroy a component, I'm going to have to take it off the DOM. So let's try this out. On our top level page, let's go ahead and add a new button so that we can switch between kitten picker and kitten queue list. So right now we're just showing our kitten picker because the queue list is not selected. So let's add a button up at the very top. We're just going to keep this one simple. So It'll do whatever cute list is, we'll do the opposite of it. And then we'll just say swap. So now once we hit the swap button, we should see each of those come through. You'll see here when I hit the swap button, the cuteness picker is now showing. If I change that out, you'll see the on destroy method actually occur. So this is a really good way if you have any subscriptions to unsubscribe to those so that way you don't get any memory issues. We're going to add a whole new component just to show off that tick operation a little bit. You can also see this in the Svelte docs. So I'm going to go back over here, just like I often like to do. I'm just going to copy a component, especially this one that has the mount stuff in it. So I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to call this cat text. And in here, we're actually just going to swap all of this out for an easy text area. So we'll do text area in the HTML. And then for the rest of this, we're going to copy the example for text. Now if I click on display cat text, we should have this nice little text input box that we can stretch out. The thing that we're trying to do here is so that we can click uh, let's do some so it's in the middle. So on some I would expect when I hit tab like that for the cursor to remain there. Unfortunately, that's not what's happening. So what we can do is include the selection start and end and add a tick in there so that it updates at the same time. So here where we have selection start and end, we're just going to add a tick and we'll import that tick from Svelte. So now if we try this again and I select sum and hit tab, notice how it just stays there. That's how you can utilize the tick lifecycle component. In other courses, we'll touch base on this a little more, but I just wanted to show you the basics.